You are about to enter the world of strange truth, a world where the line between fact and fiction is almost imperceptible. Beyond Belief, Fact or Fiction. Hosted by James Brolin. We live in a world where the real and the unreal live side by side, where substance is disguised as illusion, and the only explanations are unexplainable. Can you separate truth from fantasy? To do so, you must break through the web of your experience and open your mind to things beyond belief. We've all heard the riddle of the half-filled glass. Is the glass that holds this drink half full, or is it half empty? Or maybe it really isn't a drink at all. Be on your guard tonight. We're about to show you stories that will challenge your concepts of fact and fiction. We've changed names and dates, but the events that inspired our stories remain. Can you tell which are authentic and which are just pieces of a fictional puzzle? Here's to the challenge. Do you believe in crystal balls? Cards that tell your fortune? Do you read your horoscope every day? Well, millions do. Because there's always been a human need to want to know the future. Of course, we don't have to take it too seriously. We might just dabble in the mystical. Like the three girls on our next story. They were just trying to have a little scary fun while they were home alone. At least they thought they were home alone. They're out of here. We've got the place to ourselves this weekend. I know. We'll pick Brooke up and come on over. How long will it take you? Okay, cool, bye. I'll never forget that weekend as long as I live. Looking back, I wish we'd never played that Dad? night. Did you bring it? Of course. Have I ever forgotten? <laughs> Are we ready? Yep. We are the pure vessels in search of greater knowledge. We do not fear you, for you are the truth. And in the truth, there is no danger, only wisdom. Should I date Justin? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, should you? He's just the hottest guy at school. Shh. I want the answer. Now came the spooky part. The game piece seemed to move by itself to spell the answer. No. <laughs> Brooke, you were moving it. <laughs> uh, I did not. OK, come on, you guys. We have to be serious for this to work. Even Brooke was getting into it now. Stop moving it. I'm not moving it. I swear. Suddenly, the game piece started to spell a name, almost by itself. Okay. T R Victor? Who's Victor? We probably should have been more frightened. Who are you? S O S Help? But who are you? Free me. How? Pages are turning. But how? Maybe it's Victor. Oh, come on, you guys. I'm sure it's just a draft. Do not turn to spirits or ghosts. Do not seek them out. <laughs> it's a warning. It's got to be a coincidence. Only one way to find out. Come on, Brooke. Don't be such a wuss. What do you want? You. What the hell was that? That's it. I'm 
freaking out. <sighs> it's nothing, you guys. It's just the wind. Let's go. Hands on. Ty? Who, us? Oh, this is too weird. Maybe we should just stop. No. Just a couple more questions. Let's find out where Victor is. Where are you, Victor? A T T, T, T I, I C. Uh-uh. No, no, that's it. I'm done. I'm out of here. Don't worry, Brooke. The only thing that could possibly be up in the attic are a couple of rats. And my dad put traps out last weekend to catch them. Chill. That ain't no rat. It's Victor. Don't be silly. No. You guys. What if we somehow released him? Just stay calm. We said the meditation before we started. That protects us. Why? We made it up. What are we gonna do? I don't know, but do something. He's gone. Thank God it's over. Let's make a vow right now that we're never gonna mess around with that stuff again. Definitely. Come on, you guys, let's go watch a movie. <laughs> oh my God. It's Victor. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very funny, Joe. Now for sure we are watching a comedy. The next morning, we were going out for breakfast. Where's Brooke? I don't know. I thought she was with you. No, she's not with me. Well, I was just in her room, and she wasn't there. Her bed was made. It looked like she didn't even sleep there last night. The board. What's going on here? Brooke must have pulled it out of the fire last night. Maybe she's playing some sort of joke. Well, I don't think it's very funny. Where is she? Let's ask the board. Where is Brooke? W I T H with M with me. <laughs> Was one of the girls secretly maneuvering the piece to spell out the answers? If so, where was Brooke? She was never seen again after that night. Did she use this bizarre opportunity to disappear and start a new life somewhere else? Or did the girls cross over a line beyond the world of games and stumble into a terrifying, strange truth? Was this story real? We'll find out at the end of our show. Next, the strange story of a man and his television that's truly beyond belief. The next story is kind of a change of pace. It's a bit larger than life, but then so is our main character. There's some laughs to be found here, along with some chills. As you watch this rather bizarre tale, keep in mind that at its core, it's really a love story. The story of a 450-pound man hopelessly in love with a 26-inch television. Watch. What a nice
nice, nice day to go fishing. They've entered a world in Gee, which time does not exist. A world of gliding movements and strange colors. Of serenity. This is a very special sandwich, Brad. Do you know why? Because it's the last sandwich I'm ever going to serve you. Now, come on, Shelly. I can't see this. Brad, turn off the TV. Let's go for a walk or something. Take a walk? Now, why should I go outside when I can sit home and watch nature on TV? Wow, look at that. Oh, now, now Shelly, come on, I told you before. I work hard all week, and when I'm not working, I like to sit home and enjoy my favorite hobby. And TV is my hobby. Wow, look at that group. Brad Lewis wasn't the type of man who cared about the quality of life, just the quality of his picture. What's wrong? Nothing's wrong, just some bad reception. Oh, good. You had me scared for a sec. I thought it was an emergency, you getting out of your chair and all. Come on, cupcake. Come on. Why don't you just kick it? Kick it? This is my baby. Yeah. We're going out to dinner, remember? I can't. <laughs> Look what's on tonight. <laughs> That's it. Brad, I'm leaving you. I am sick and tired of being in a menage a trois with a television! <laughs> Do you hear me? Brad, you hear me? Brad! <laughs> Goodbye, Brad. I'm going to stay with my mom. So you and your TV can be alone. Did you hear me? I can't live with you anymore. Oh, Brad. You really don't want me to go. Shh. Please, Shelly. This is the part where they shoot the dog. We're losing him. Oh my God, do something, please. Let's shock him. Clear? Again. Clear? That's it. I'm sorry, ma'am. There's nothing more we can do for him. Let's transport him. All right. Lift him on three. One, two, three. <laughs> Wait, set him down. Set him down. Oh, my God. What happened? Toledo? What is it? What is it? His heart's beating again. I'll be damned. Brad Lewis, recently divorced and now unemployed, believes the television was responsible for saving his life. Now Brad tells us he has all the time in the world to devote to his hobby, best friend, and the love of his life.
I never really paid much attention to this label back here. You know, the one that says warning, electrocution hazard. But now that I've seen the last story, I'm definitely taking this into the shop. Is the voltage running through a TV set strong enough to revive a heart that stopped beating? And did this story really happen? Well, if there is a real Brad Lewis out there, he's probably watching this show right now. And we can only hope for one thing, that he's a Nielsen household. Bon appetit, Brad. True or false, we'll find out at the conclusion of our show. Next, a sweet little girl with a terrifying imagination on Beyond Belief, Fact or Fiction. As we grow into adulthood, our bodies become stronger and our knowledge increases. And the only thing that seems to diminish is our imagination. To a child, the separation between reality and make-believe can be a very thin line. Some might say an imaginary line. Take little Alice. Her vivid imagination often made the make-believe seem real, frighteningly real. Yes, I think. Would you like some more tea? You're my best friend, too. What's that? Oh, dear. That's terrible. <laughs> my daughter Alice always seemed to be lost in a world of her own. An innocent, childlike world, or so I thought. It started like another typical day. Alice was playing make-believe, and I was entertaining our neighbor, Liz Kimball. Who's Alice talking to? Oh, Sydney. It's an imaginary friend. <laughs> ah. Well, she seems to be taking it very seriously. Aren't you concerned about that, Maggie? Well, sometimes. But I had an imaginary friend when I was little. Doesn't Sally? Well, yes, she had one, but she gave that up years ago. Really? Well, Alice has always had an active imagination. There's nothing we're worried about. Alice, honey, time to get ready for ballet class. OK, Mom. Now, Cindy, I've got to go to dance class. You be good. I'll be back soon. Look, um, Maggie. Uh... If you get concerned, I know a really good therapist. Oh, well, thanks, Liz. I think it's just a phase Alice will grow out of. Oh, you're probably right. It's, it, I'm probably reading much more into this than there is. <laughs> I thought Liz was overreacting. But then Alice said something I'll never forget. I'm very sorry, Mrs. Kimball. About what, Alice? About your divorce. Alice, what have I told you about making up stories? I'm not making it up. Sydney told me. I'm, I'm so sorry, Liz. No, no, Maggie, Maggie, um, it's true. I'd known Liz for five years. We'd shared everything. How could Alice have known when I didn't? I don't know, Diane. The slogan's just not working for me. I think we need to punch up the copy. Um, could you hold on a second, Diane? Well, sure. What is it, honey? Mommy's working. Mommy, Miss Emery, she check on Rebecca. She's really sick. She could die. Alice, how many times do I have to tell you? Mommy, Miss Emery has to check on Rebecca. It's really important. Sisney told me. Um, I need a minute with Alice. Oh, well, what'd she say? Oh, no, Rebecca's fine. She's playing in her room. Oh, listen, don't worry about it. Just call me when you're finished. Great. Diane couldn't help but check on Rebecca, and thank goodness she did. Rebecca! Rebecca? Rebecca, sweetheart! Oh, oh my gosh, you're burning up! Diane got her to the hospital just in time. <laughs> this whole Sydney thing was making me very <laughs> uncomfortable. So I decided to talk to Alice about it. Oh, honey, you are doing such a nice job. 
How come these don't have any icing on them? Because Sydney doesn't like icing on his cookies. Oh. Alice, I think we need to have a little talk about Sydney. Why, Mommy? Honey, because you're scaring people with your stories. But, Mommy, they're all true. Sydney doesn't lie. Alice, I don't want you to talk to Sydney anymore. Well, you're getting to be such a big girl. Don't you think it's time that you stopped pretending Sydney was real? But Mommy is real. Aren't you, Sydney? No, honey, he's not real. No one else can see him. He doesn't want anybody else to see him because he's my best friend. Oh. I thought that Rebecca was your best friend. Aunt Doris is dead. Hello. Yes? Sydney told me. No. Here you go, Sydney. I made this one especially for you. There's no icing. I forbid Alice to ever play with Sydney again. Mm, aren't these good? But every night I heard sounds coming from her room. That's what Mom said. She doesn't want me playing with you anymore. I don't think it's fair either. No, she's not mean, Sydney. She's pretty nice. Of course I can keep a secret. Oh, Sydney, that's a great idea! You can stay in here. It'll be our secret. Of course, I'll never leave you. I love you, Sydney. Was Alice really getting psychic messages from an imaginary friend? Or maybe she was a clairvoyant who was too young to understand her own powers, so she invented a friend to cope with it all. There must be some explanation for her ability to predict so many events. Or is our story of the imaginary friend completely imaginary? Okay, real. Was this story truth or falsehood? We'll tell you in the final moments of tonight's show. Next, a dream marriage turns into a nightmare on Beyond Belief, Fact or Fiction. The diamond ring. For many, the symbol of a loving relationship. But in the search for that perfect relationship, what are the odds that we will ever find that one soulmate who will make us happy forever? Yet sometimes we see a couple that makes us believe those odds can be overcome. Now, Stephen and Brenda were like that, young, attractive, hopelessly in love. When they got married, it truly seemed to be a match made in heaven. What are you, crazy? You could have killed me. Next time, don't duck and I will! Oh, that's it! I cannot wait to get out of this house and away from you. Not more than me marrying you was the biggest mistake of my life! You wanna talk about big mistakes? We're a big mistake! Ah, if I ever see you again, it'll be too soon. Well, I've got news for you. I never wanna see you again, even if you were the last man on earth! Stephen and Brenda went their separate ways and stopped all contact. They didn't care about anything except being away from each other. Ironically, they picked the same place to move to. Los Angeles, the city of angels. But neither of them knew the other one lived there, too. Each had to endure the challenge of every couple that breaks up, learning how to date all over again. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. Wow. This is fantastic. It really does. You've done a wonderful job, Barbara. Brenda. <laughs> Best meals I have ever eaten. <laughs> I can't believe I finally met a man who knows how to cook a steak. Oh, well, thank you. And the vegetables? Uh -huh. 
I mean, it was like you just picked them from the garden. They were cooked perfectly. <laughs> and the wine. What is that? It's a uh, uh, Pinot Noir. <laughs> are you, are you? <coughs> I'm so, are you all right? <coughs> Pinot Noir. Yeah. <clears throat> Sometimes your song plays at just the wrong time. I think that we should uh, call, call it a night. It's getting late, and I got to get up early in the morning. Oh. Uh, well, I, I <clears throat> I'd, I'd love to do it again sometime. Our next dedication is for two lovebirds, Brenda and Stephen, who didn't give their love a chance. So Brenda and Stephen, if you're out there listening, this is for you, because the two of you were meant for each other. Stephen and Brenda, it's time to make up. I want you to drop whatever you're doing and meet at the Santa Monica Pier in one hour. I must be nuts. She doesn't even live here. I know it will be better from today and ever more. Oh, I ask you. I love you. Forgive me. I'm so sorry. I should have never. No, no, it was it was all my fault. I, I have such a temper, and I I should have tried harder. We both should have. It's like we have a second chance. We don't have to mess it up this time. That was really sweet what you told the DJ to say on the radio. DJ, what? Are you, I, I thought you ain't dedication. No, I I didn't even know you were living in LA. Stephen. Brenda. Oh. So in the end, boy gets girl. But is it the right boy and the right girl? And just how many Stevens and Brendas were reunited that night? What really happened here? It wasn't simply that they heard a message meant for another Steven and Brenda. Because when they checked out every radio station in Los Angeles the next morning, no one reported broadcasting any such message. But radio waves have strange properties. They can become crossed in the atmosphere, even be received in people's dental work. Maybe this was a broadcast from another city, another country, or was it a communication from some other world altogether? After all, it supposedly took place in the City of Angels. Next, we'll find out which stories are inspired by actual events and which are fabrications on Beyond Belief, Fact or Fiction. Now the portion of our show that separates the real from the unreal. Several of the stories we've seen tonight were inspired by actual events, while others have been invented for your entertainment. Let's revisit them one by one and learn the true answers. 
Our first plot was about the three girls and their frightening board game. Oh my God, it's Victor. So did you guess this story was a complete fraud? You guessed absolutely right. We made it up. And then there was the couch potato whose life was somehow saved by his beloved TV. Holy Toledo. What is it? What is it? His heart's beating again. Could this story have really happened? Well, anything is possible, but not in this case. It's completely false. And what's your opinion of the story about the widow who seemed to receive stock tips from her late husband? Jonathan, what are you trying to tell me? Do you? Do you think that you've got this one figured out? Did the events take place? Yes, they did. And how about that story of the little girl and her special imaginary friend? I'm very sorry, Mrs. Kimball. About what, Alice? About your divorce. Alice? What have I told you about making up stories? I'm not making it up, Sydney told me. Did you think this story was a stretch of the imagination? Everyone's entitled to their opinion. But the events in this story did happen. And our last story was about the divorced couple who were reunited by a strange radio announcement that some say was never broadcast. You are listening to Ricky Strong. Our next dedication is for two lovebirds, Brenda and Stephen, who didn't give their love a chance. So Brenda and Stephen, if you're out there listening, this is for you. What's your judgment this time? Do you think a story like this could have happened? Well, it did. So, how was your judgment tonight? Three of our plots were inspired by actual events, but the other two were totally false. Perhaps we've changed your perception of what is real and what is unreal tonight. Sometimes they're almost impossible to tell apart, and that's a strange truth. Good night. Join us next time on Beyond Belief.